Welcome to the deep dive. Today we're focused on the North Atlantic, where a, well, a true monster storm is forming near Newfoundland. It really is. We have a lot of source material here on its intensity, so our mission is to understand what makes this one so exceptional. And exceptional is absolutely the right word. This system is forecast to hit a central pressure around 930 to 935 millibars. Wow. To put that in perspective for you, those are pressure readings you usually see in uh, a Category 4 or maybe even a Category 5 hurricane. But this is a winter storm, not tropical at all. Exactly. It's in a very, very rare historical class. Okay, let's unpack this then. That 930 millibar number sounds historically low. We know there's a technical definition for bombogenesis. So what makes this a bomb and just how extreme is it really? Well, the standard for a bomb cyclone is a pressure drop of at least 24 hectopascals in 24 hours. Okay. Our sources show this storm didn't just meet that, it completely shattered it. It dropped 30 HPA in its first 24 hours. So that's way over the minimum criteria. It's 125% over achievement. And the total drop over 48 hours is verified at 41 HPA. This is, without a doubt, extreme bombogenesis. And that kind of pressure drop puts it alongside some pretty infamous storms, right? It does. When you're talking 930 millibars, you're in the same league as the uh, huge 2013 North Atlantic ETC, and maybe the most famous one, the 1991 perfect storm. So we understand the sheer scale of it, but that brings up the big question, why? Why is this happening? This feels like it's more than just regular surface weather. That's where it gets really fascinating. The primary driver for this is actually way up high in the stratosphere. The stratosphere. Right. If you look back to late November, there was an early season disruption of the stratospheric polar vortex, a sudden stratospheric warming or SSW. Okay, so the polar vortex, the spinning mass of super cold air up high. Yeah. How does something happening 50 kilometers up slam the accelerator on a surface storm? That's the key. It's called vertical coupling. When that SSW event happened, it destabilized the vortex, essentially letting energy pour downwards through the atmosphere. It cracked the seal on the Arctic, so to speak. A great way to put it, that crack allowed for this intense injection of frigid Arctic air, what we call a cold air outbreak, to spill over the very warm North Atlantic. And that's where the Gulf Stream is. Exactly. You have that frigid air hitting the warm Gulf Stream waters, meeting the Labrador Current. It creates this enormous temperature contrast. It's like pouring rocket fuel on a fire. That's the perfect analogy. The air-sea energy exchange and the latent heat release is what fuels this explosive growth. So with all that energy, what does it mean for someone out on the water? A freighter captain or an offshore rig worker? What's the immediate danger? The immediate danger is from the pressure gradient. It's generating widespread hurricane force wind warnings. Hurricane force. We're talking sustained winds up to 75 knots. That's over 139 kilometers per hour across huge stretches of ocean. And what about the sea state? The sources I'm seeing warn that while the significant wave height is around 15 meters or 49 feet. Right, the significant height. Individual waves could be much, much bigger. They could. Hmm. Potentially approaching 25 to 30 meters. Yeah. You're basically navigating rogue wave territory. But it's not just the immediate threat. Go on. That stratospheric trigger has locked in a very dynamic pattern. It's not just one storm. It's created a rapid storm train, steering these intense systems one after another right toward Europe. That's the downstream impact. So a temporary warm wave for Europe, but also a lot of hazards. Precisely. We're seeing massive rainfall potential, up to 130 millimeters in parts of Scotland, which will create a serious flood risk. And the winds. The infrastructural stress will be severe. The Faroe Islands, for instance, are projected to see gusts between 160 and 220 kilometers per hour. So what's the big takeaway here? This whole event shows that extreme energy transfer doesn't stop when the tropical season ends. It just shifts into these hyperbaroclinic systems. It does, and it's all driven by that large-scale high-altitude forcing. So now the focus has to shift to tracking things like the North Atlantic Oscillation and critically the state of the polar vortex itself. Right. Which leaves you with a pretty important question to think about. If this whole violent storm train was kicked off by that stratospheric forcing, what's the likelihood that this dynamic zonal pattern persists, continuing to deliver extreme weather well into the core winter months of January and February 2026?